Virgin Voyagers has been getting a lot of attention lately. In fact, they've even won some pretty prestigious cruise awards. However, no cruise line is perfect. And after our very first cruise on Virgin Voyages, I definitely have some things that I love, but as well, some things that I unfortunately hated. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifeballcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, hate is a little bit of a strong word. However, I would say that after our very first cruise on Virgin Voyages, that the Virgin cruise experience is a little bit polarizing. And there are some things that I think a lot of people will really love and other things that maybe will be a little bit less comfortable. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you all of those things, our loves, our hates, and even some things that I guess I have a little bit of a mixed review on. Now, one thing I should mention is this is not meant to bash Virgin. In fact, I think just about every day Virgin did send a text message asking for basically a quick survey to let them know a little bit of feedback as to how the cruise is going. So I always kind of consider these videos feedback. Now, before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Okay, let's start off with a negative to get that out of the way. So I have five things that I really just didn't love on Virgin Voyages. So one of them was the main pool area. Now we've all seen photos of the fact that the pool on Virgin Voyages, well, that it is small. So I expected that. However, I would say that it was smaller in person than it really does appear on videos. The reason is, and you might be able to see it in the video that I am showing you here, but the middle part, basically there's kind of a square or a cube that is the actual pool. The rest of the pool, so clearly about two thirds of the pool is actually sort of a ledge of maybe a foot or a little bit less of water. So really where you could walk or you could sit, that was okay. But the pool itself was very, very small. Now there is another pool and this is a wellness pool. This was also pretty small, but it is at least an alternative. And there are two hot tubs in that area. Now I know pools are not everything on a cruise ship, but the fact that Virgin Voyages is sailing in basically hot weather destinations on the most part right now, I do feel like it probably would have been nicer to have a better pool area. I'm not even sure if they can do anything about it on future builds, but anyway, that's my two cents on that. Number two, now this is honestly not something that I hear talked about very much, but it was something that really did irk me while I was on this cruise. It was the lack of comfortable seating. So basically the seating is, well, two things. Either it is bed-like, lounge-like seating, which is really very, very comfortable, but either you have that type of seating or you have seating that is really trendy looking, but just not that practical or that comfortable. Now I would say when it comes to some of that loungy bed-like seating, that in some cases it really makes a lot of sense. Like when you're next to the pool, I think that that is pretty nice. It was a pretty nice touch next to the main pool. However, in other areas like the wake area of the cruise ship, which was just gorgeous by the way, you had these bed like loungers where if you met another couple you had to sort of sit on the bed together and it just felt a little bit odd to me now it is a good way to meet other people so I will give them that some people really seem to like that but I would have liked a little bit more just traditional seating like couches and comfortable chairs and the other type of chairs were basically these hard wooden chairs and there were a lot of other areas around the cruise ship where the seating just wasn't that comfortable now when it came to the seating in any of the restaurants that was actually actually very comfortable, very normal, if you will. However, in some of the public areas on the cruise ship, including the outdoor areas, the seating was sometimes a little bit like being in a schoolyard or in a cafeteria. It just felt a little bit childlike and it did feel less luxurious than I thought it should for really such a good cruise line. A lack of an opportunity to really see the ocean. Now I know this is a little bit of an odd thing to say for a cruise ship, you should really be able to see the ocean, especially a cruise ship that is not overly large. It is 110,000 tons. However, in many areas, the view of the ocean was just a little bit obstructed, if you will. So what I mean is in some areas where you had like those glass railings, they were tinted sort of a gray. So it just impeded your view to the ocean. In other areas of the Valiant Lady, the glass was frosted. And again, that really did impede the view of the ocean. And going back to the seating, there was a beautiful area 
on the 16th deck where you would have had an amazing view of the aft of the cruise. However, there was this raised seating that went around the edge of this deck and faced inwards. And what a lot of people were doing to be able to see outwards is they would actually be standing up in this area, which really probably isn't the best use of space. Now, I might sound very nitpicky on this one, but I promise you the loves are coming up next. But in my opinion, there's a lack of public washrooms on this cruise ship. Now, there definitely were public washrooms around. However, many of them were for one or for two people. And for a cruise ship of this size, I really just felt like there really should have been more washrooms. And by the way, more hand washing stations as well the group fitness classes now this might seem like a small thing however for people who do actually want to join the group fitness classes that are included by the way on virgin voyages i think that this is a little bit annoying basically these classes just fill up so quickly you have to sign up on your app right away as soon as you board we met a lot of people who didn't know they had to do that as soon as they boarded and they basically missed out on those classes and i have to say even for myself I took a look at 2.45 in the afternoon, boarding time is at 2 p.m., and all of the classes were already sold out. Now, apparently people don't always show up, so you can always go a few minutes early for the class and you're able to join if any space does become available. However, I don't wanna get dressed in my gym clothes just to be told there is no room. So it would be something nice if perhaps Virgin either opened up more classes or found a different sign up process so more people could join. Now I have made a couple of other videos about Virgin Voyages and by the way, I will leave them at the end of this one. But something people have asked me is would I cruise Virgin Voyages again? So let me tell you about the things that we absolutely loved. The entertainment. The entertainment honestly was beyond my expectations. It was innovative, it was fun, it kept me either on my feet or at least awake, which is more than I can say for some other cruises that I go on. Now, in particular, I really liked the ship show, I liked dueling realities, I liked misbehave. I thought these were all a lot of fun and I highly recommend checking out the entertainment. Don't forget that you do need to reserve, so make sure that you do that as soon as you board the cruise ship. Now, by the way, for those who really like a nightlife, I was cruising with my 22-year-old son, and I can confirm in his words that Virgin Valiant Lady had the best nightclub at sea. Now, something else that we absolutely loved on Virgin Voyages, and for me, it really is a big part of cruising, was the food quality. It was so good. So all of the food is included on Virgin Voyages. So that means all of the main restaurants, which are basically like specialty restaurants on a lot of cruise ships. We absolutely loved the wake. We also liked Pink Agave. That's like their Mexican restaurant. By the way, that steak topped with cheese, very, very good. I also liked Extra Virgin. Gumbe was a lot of fun. And I am a big fan of cruise ship pizza and the pizza on Virgin Valiant Lady did not disappoint. The hammock on the sea terrace or balcony cabin. Now I have to admit before going on my first Virgin Cruise, I did think that the hammock was a little bit gimmicky. Oh my goodness, it was so relaxing to sit outside and to kind of just swing on that hammock and look at the water. Oh, I absolutely love that hammock. Well done, Virgin. The fact that the tips are included. Now tips and gratuities are always something a little bit controversial on cruise ships, especially these days, as a lot of cruise lines are really raising those gratuities. So it really was a pleasure to know that all of my tips were included in the price of my Virgin Cruise. The status match program. Now I know this is not offered at all times, but definitely if you are booking a Virgin Cruise, take a look to see if they offer a status match program, especially if you reach those higher loyalty levels on any other cruise lines. With our status match, we were able to get an upgrade from the regular Wi-Fi to the premium Wi-Fi. We were able to get some laundry services and a $100 bar tab. Okay, this has to be said, there are no kids on board. Everybody is an adult and there really is a certain atmosphere when you're on an adult only cruise ship that really is enjoyable. There are no annoying announcements or solicitations. Now, if you've been on another cruise line before, you might know that you are sometimes woken up with announcements in the morning time, or you might hear about the latest bingo or spa specials over the intercom. And it can be a little bit annoying. So it really is a pleasure that it is so quiet and relaxing on a Virgin Voyager ship, at least in terms of the announcements. And as well, you have no solicitations. So there are no photographers around the cruise ship, at least that I saw. And while there is a spa and there are services, you can go and seek them out. You are not gonna get bombarded by people trying to sell you things. 
the crew. Now I did expect the crew to be a little bit different on Virgin Voyages. A lot of us really have heard this. They can feel comfortable to be themselves. And I do think that that really showed. It was a very happy staff. But what did surprise me was the fact that the service was so good. They were solution oriented. They were friendly. It was really a pleasure to sail with Virgin in terms of the crew. Now I have one more thing that I absolutely loved. And then I'll tell you some things that I'm still feeling a little bit mixed on and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Bimini. Now while Virgin Voyages doesn't have its own private island the way some cruise lines do, what they do have is they seem to have an agreement with the resort in Bimini. And when you go to the resort in Bimini, transportation by tram is included as well as the entry into the resort. Now Bimini really does deserve its own video. So I will be doing that. Please let me know if that is something that you'd like to see, but we just loved Bimini. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I think that Virgin Voyages is a little bit polarizing into things that people will just love, things that people might not love as much, but there are a few things that are maybe in a bit of a gray zone. So I'll give you my thoughts. I haven't quite made up my mind on these things. So one of them is the bar tab. So the fact is when you're cruising with Virgin, you do not have an option of purchasing a beverage package. I know that a lot of people don't really like that. However, you do have a bar tab. Now the idea of the bar tab is that you can purchase this in advance of your cruise. And if you do this, you do get a little bit of, I guess, extra value. So for instance, we purchased a bar tab for $300 and we were able to get a value once we were on the cruise of $350. And your bar tab can be used for alcohol as well as specialty coffee, the soda is included. Now I can see this working well for people that are light drinkers and Virgin does have some promotions where sometimes they're giving away two or $300 worth of bar tab. So if you're not a very heavy drinker, I do think that this can work well. Now, another area that I both loved and also sometimes didn't have the best experience with was the galley. Now the galley is, well, instead of having a buffet, Virgin Voyage cruise ships, they have a galley. And the nice thing is that your food is really prepared fresh and hot. And that was something really nice. And the quality, by the way, was excellent. But something that we found is on port days, because you are waiting for somebody to bring you your food, you're waiting for a waiter to come and take your order, that it could take longer to get your food than if you just simply went up to a buffet. Now in particular on port days, because it got so busy, we found that we were spending a long time in the galley when we would have liked to get in and get off the ship. The cabin design. Now we heard a lot about the cabin design before we sailed on Virgin Valiant Lady, but to be honest, overall, I really liked the cabin. I found it bright. I liked the fact that with the iPad, you could open and close the blinds. I thought that was pretty neat. One thing that I guess is a little bit odd is the beds. They are, by the way, very comfortable. I think that that is the most important thing, but because the beds can be made up in a bit of a modular way, I think they mostly aren't these days, but you do have sort of this platform that sticks out on one side of the bed and you have a couch style arm on the other. So maybe if Virgin is replacing their furniture, I'm not sure if they may change that. The decor and the design of the ship. Now this ship has some areas that are truly so aesthetically beautiful, but there are other areas where for me, I think it might just not be my taste. In some areas it looks very minimal, other areas it looks very industrial, other areas like right outside of the elevators or even sometimes in some of the common areas right under the stairs or in the hallways, it looks a little bit office building like or even high school or hospital like. Now overall, I think that this is a very minor thing, but it does chop up the aesthetic of the cruise ship. Now Virgin Voyages really does have a vibe. You will see that even in the elevators. So it would just be nice to see that vibe spreading through a little bit as you go from one area of the cruise ship to the other. Now this next one, I definitely have mixed feelings about it. I know it's seen as a positive by many people and maybe I am just a traditionalist this way, but the officers are not wearing uniforms as they go around the cruise ship. So. In one way, it is kind of nice because all Virgin Voyages employees, well, they all kind of look the same. However, I guess I am a traditionalist and I want to see who the captain is and who the officers are. I do like to see that. Okay, so what's the verdict? Did the things that we really loved, well, did they outweigh the things that we didn't like as much? Now, yes, overall, they really did. Honestly, when we got off our cruise, we really were talking about all of the different things we really appreciated, in particular, the food, the service, the entertainment, and overall, we had a really good time on board.
Now, if you are coming from another cruise line, I do think that you need to adjust your expectations because Virgin Voyages is different, but truthfully, I think there is a lot that they are doing well and I can see them only getting better. Now, I'm gonna leave a playlist of my other Virgin Voyages, so if you are going on a Virgin cruise, make sure to watch those next, and I'd love to hear from you. If you've cruised on Virgin before, please let me know what are the things that you really loved, what are the things that you didn't like so much, please let me know down in the comments below. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now, and happy cruising.